This is Git Minutes episode 45. It is uh, probably the second last episode of the podcast, unless I come back to find some time in the future to bring it back to life. Um, but this is uh, the second last one from uh, the Git Merge conference in 2017. Um, I'm talking to uh, Ed Thompson from, uh, I think then it was GitHub, but now he's back at Microsoft, um, about Git and, and libgit too. And it's a very interesting conversation. Um, Ed is a good speaker and uh, and so much that he now even has his own podcast about Git together with Martin Woodward. Uh, and it's called All Things Git. So uh, if you haven't heard about it already, which would be kind of strange if you're listening to this podcast, uh, definitely look it up. It picks up where I left off, kind of with with uh, with Git minutes, um, or, or I leave a gap to be filled. And and definitely, it's a great podcast. It uh, takes a much more human approach, and uh, I think generally much easier to listen to than uh, a lot of the deeper technical things that I've I've uh, had going on here. So um, yeah. Go, go there to all things uh, Git and, and subscribe to their podcast and uh, enjoy this one uh, <laughs> while you're downloading. So take it away. Okay, so now I'm, I'm sitting here with uh, Edward Thompson from from GitHub. From GitHub, yes. Is this, is this your first time on the podcast? It is my first time on the podcast, yeah, in fact. I, I wanted to have you on for a long time because I've seen you at many Git Merge conferences. Right. And, and you are a good speaker. So it's always nice to have good speakers on the podcast. Well, thank you. It turns out I'm a little shy, though. So I've, I've <laughs> every time I see you coming, I, I just kind of walk. Yeah, away. yeah. Well, I finally traced you down. Yeah. And here we are. Well, thanks for having me. So um, what do you think about the conference? Let's start there. I think it's a great conference. I love Git Merge. Um, this is my... Uh, I think this is my fourth Git merge, um, and every year uh, it's bigger and better. Um, it's a, an amazingly well-organized conference, and it's wonderful both to talk with people who are passionate about Git, um, but also um, one of the things that, that I find most interesting about this conference is the Git Contributor Summit, which is where uh, the people who build Git and build tools on Git um, are able to sit down together and talk about some of the problems that they face and, and how to solve them. Mm -hmm. And can, can you uh, go a bit more into like which of the topics, if you if you could name a few from yesterday? Uh, I, I talked with uh, some of the earlier guests today about some of them, but uh, which which one do you find like particularly interesting for your own use case or in general? So uh, th for my own use case, uh, speaking as a, a as a GitHuber, um, one of the things that. Um, that I'm particularly interested in is alternate ref backends. Um, you know, at, at some point, the, the file system gets a little painful. I mean, let's let's be honest. There there are pain points there, um, and so it would be nice to uh, um, to address that. Um, and actually, you know what? That's always been one of the things I've been interested in. Before GitHub, I was at Microsoft, and one of the pain points uh, using Git on Windows is the case insensitive file system. Um, that's true on Mac OS too, of course. So if you're storing references in the file system, all of a sudden you've got a all uppercase foo versus a, a all lowercase foo, and you've got a collision in your branch name. Or you know somebody foolishly tries to create a a, a branch named head all lowercase, and and things mm -hmm. fall apart. Um, so that's one of the things I'm I'm particularly interested in. But uh, even even stepping back away from the technical topics. Um, I just like to be able to sit down and, and see everybody and talk to everybody. Um, because, you know, I, I, the, the Git mailing list is fine, and I, I don't work so much on Git. I usually work on libgit, too. Um, and so we use pull requests. And, and using GitHub is, is fine. Um, but you really miss the, the human connection. It's really easy to get frustrated with somebody when they're, you know, several hundred miles away or a thousand. Yeah. And, uh, and you're talking to them, and it's all electronic. Um, and so it, it's really nice to put a, a face to to the name. Yeah, I mean, all, all, even the people you met in the past as well. I guess you've all come together every now and then. At Absolutely, conferences like these. Yeah. Um, I mean, back then, I'm not quite sure when we talked about uh, LibGit last on the podcast, but I think it was already a topic at the first conference. That was not so long after its well, inception. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's great. When it started, but. 
Uh, I'm sure Libgit has kind of come a long way since then. Can you sort of say about who, like, about the team who's working on it? And yeah. What are they busy with? And yeah, like that? that's a that's a good question. So, um, y my first introduction to to Libgit two was when uh, there were two maintainers, uh, Vicent Marti and Russell Belfer, and um, they did great work, prolific work, and um, they've they've sort of stepped away a little bit, to be honest with you, and are working on other other problems. Um, and so right now, I'm one of the maintainers along with uh, Carlos Martin Nieto. Um, and uh, I think that's great. Uh, Carlos does a, a, a great job. And um, the the times when he takes a well-deserved break, I, I try to do a, a little bit myself. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest with you, uh, that's, I mean, he and I are, are really the, the, the core right now, but um, we've got some great, really great uh, contributors. Um, uh, in fact, one of the, the nice things that we were able to do at this Git merge was to sit down with one of them. We, <laughs> poor guy, I feel so, I feel terrible about this. You know, this is one of those like open source, uh, my, my life has been impacting my ability to work on open source. Like this, this pull request has been open for a, painfully long time and I feel really bad that how we, many years <laughs> uh, single digits at least <laughs> okay but um and you know he, d he deserved a, a review and you know he was so it's work tree support in libgit2 the multiple work tree support um that gets introduced and so to our you know in our defense it's not really super well baked or it, it wasn't when he first opened the pull request inside git itself so there were a lot of moving parts there still so we weren't weren't quite ready to to take a, a, a firm look at it yet but um you know, at this conference, we were able to sit down with him, uh, and uh, he could walk us through mm -hmm. uh, some of the things. It's so much nicer to you know to be able to just bounce questions off of him in person. Sure. Um, so, and 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 that's great. And uh, not all of the uh, by no means are all of the contributors to libgit two here, but um, you know, it, there there are a handful, and it's nice to to sit down and talk to him. Mm -hmm. And what, what is like the landscape now of libgit 2 contributors? I mean, GitHub surely does a lot. Uh, yeah, we do. And who, who, what other of the big companies are still into it? Uh, you know, as, as far as contributions go, um, there aren't, it, it's mostly like people who are scratching an itch at this point. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, by no means is libgit 2 like done, but it's, done for the purposes that a lot of people are are happy with so we've we've definitely seen a, a tail off in the number of contributions mm -hmm. um, but you know despite that everybody's using it maybe not everybody but you know github uses it um, uh, for pull requests and you know various other things GitLab is using it microsoft's using it atlassian is is not using it so much on their server, but I just found out that Source Tree for Windows has started using libgit too. So that's something that we're really excited about. So um, we're seeing, you know, not as many contributions lately, but I think that that's just a, a symptom of um, of where it is in its in its life cycle. It's a lot more stable than it used to be, and it needs a lot less work. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, like talking about feature parity, I guess if you got to work trees, you, you come a long way. Yeah. Uh, what is like the, the, the rest of the like typical Git features? Are they all now in libgit? Uh, Not there? all, but you know, many. Um, so, you know, we've got, uh, so when I started, I, I worked on our merge support um, and then I added rebase. Um, you know, there, there are some little things like we can rebase, but only rebase dash dash merge emulation. Mm -hmm. We don't do rebase dash dash am emulation. So we, we don't have a fully functional patch application system yet. We've got a 80% functional patch application system. It's one of the things I'll, I'll finish up one of these days when I have a little spare time, which seems fleeting. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, th that's, that's a big hole. I would say that some of the more esoteric things, um, you know, we could we could do more to help um, clients like like Source Tree, for instance. Um, we could do more to help them execute hooks. We don't do a you know we do nothing. We expect the them to do it. We could we could do a little bit okay. more. Um, and I'm excited to see some of the the options to to get there. But um, you know, I, I I'm I'm reasonably happy with with what we're doing. It's not it's not perfect. Uh, the one thing that that some people do ask for that we don't really do is uh, uh, anything on the server. You know, you can't run libgit2 and run like upload pack or receive pack or anything like that. 
Um, most people don't ask for that. You know, at GitHub, we certainly were perfectly happy just running Git. Okay. Um, but, you know, some people have asked for it, and that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe someday, but uh, that, that's one of those things that's not even on my radar, for instance. Yeah. So uh, when you were talking about, uh, was it a pluggable ref backends? Yes. Um, basically, if, if I understand correctly, that's taking, uh, is that taking the, the pack file uh, and storing that somewhere else? Uh, maybe. Uh, no, so not, not so much the pack file, but getting rid of the uh, .git refs heads as a directory. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you've got, so you've got that, you've got those as loose references, and then you've got the .git packed refs file, or you might, um, which are, is the packed references. And, you know, at some point, if you have 100,000 branches, that, those are both, neither of those are really very good. <laughs> so this is in the case if you're hosting online Git repositories and you're storing all the forks of a repository in the same repository, right? That's right, that's right. But then you get a lot of references, and then having all these references just being... Uh, yeah, basically files inside the refs uh, folder, then right. things get tricky. Yeah, I, yeah. I, if if you do it loose, that's a lot of inodes. If you do it packed, when somebody wants to, you know, delete something, or, you know, if if there's a point at which you can no longer append to that file and need to go rewrite it, that's big. And yeah, I mean, it could be. There are a lot of reasons people like a lot of refs, and we shouldn't just. You know, speaking as as somebody who hosts Git repositories, I don't want to go to them and say you can't do that. We mm. should be able to support that. I mean, right now we're like, oh, that's crazy. Who would ever want to do that? <laughs> but but some people do, and we should support that. And uh, pluggable ref backends is something. Is that something that exists in libgit, but not in Git itself? It is. It is. Yeah. One of the nice things about um, libgit two being just uh, you know up and down. C um, is that you know it's it's a little bit more modular and so it's a little bit easier for us to do things like uh, a pluggable object storage layer or a pl pluggable reference storage layer or even the network code. I mean, the the, the ways in which you can plug into libgit two are are varied, um, and that's that's been good. I mean, especially people who, you know, the, the, the needs that you have when you're hosting Git repositories on a server could be very different than the needs you have if you're running inside Visual Studio, could mm. be very different than if you're running a command line app. So sure. um, we're, we're really happy that we're flexible in that way. Hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I always, for some reason, I imagined that libgit, you know, back in the early days, that that would also be something very relevant for the server, mm -hmm. because it seemed to me like libgit was sort of like jgit, only it was made uh, and JGit had had a bit of a server kind yeah. of feel to it since it's Java, right? And right. Libgit, Libgit was just made because people don't like Java. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And uh, and so I thought that the nature of these two libraries was like similar, like in the in their purpose, but somehow like Libgit ended up being uh, Libgit two ended up being the client side thing. Yeah, and so. So first of all, you're, you're very much right. Libgit2 and JGit are, are, have a lot in common. So they were actually both started by Sean Pierce at yeah. Google. So he started Libgit2, got about, I, I don't know, a couple commits in and realized he didn't want to write this in C anymore. And so he, he went and wrote JGit. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the interesting thing is uh, they were actually, um, they were indeed started, I, I think, with a, a real server side in mind. You know, I think Sean had that in mind. And then um, when Vicent and, and Russell picked it up at GitHub, uh, they for sure had a server side in mind. Um, and I, 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 you know, just in the interest of completeness, in the interest of, of doing a good job, they were definitely doing a lot of um, operations around the working directory. But my opinion, and this is a selfish opinion, I admit, um, is that it was really Microsoft that, um, that picked it up and made it better on the client okay so yeah and that was that was purely so that we could put it into visual studio yeah. at the time and now it's not in visual studio anymore it's not they just pulled <laughs> it out of visual studio for 2017 <laughs> thanks a lot yeah i know right um and understandably a lot of good reasons yeah. I, you know i won't i won't bore you with the details but uh yeah, you know yeah, i support we, them we talked to jay uh, before about that good uh so i i think we've covered it um yeah, so uh, the pluggable ref backends is something which is definitely 
more <laughs> interesting on the server side than it is for the client, I guess. I think so, yeah. So it's kind of ironic that LabGit is the one that knows how to do it, yeah, if that's the client side tool. And I suppose JGit has, supports that as well. It does, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, what do we need to do to get that into Git core? I, what I'm going to do is is complain loudly to my buddy Michael, uh, my coworker <laughs> at GitHub, um, who uh, has has been uh, shepherding uh, a, a patch series through and, and adding his own. Uh, he's been working with somebody else as well as doing his own work um, on getting that into Git. Um, there, there's I, so there are a handful of problems, right? I mean, Git wants to run everywhere. You know, I mean, it, it'll still run on. You know, it, it runs on Linux, of course, and Mac and Windows, and that, that's the stuff we're all used to. But it runs on, you know, an IBM AX machine from the 90s. I'm, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure I saw that somebody had ported it to Cray Unicos, which, you know, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there are a lot of problems anytime you're like, I want a pluggable reference backend, and I then want to have a new, maybe you want a new default for reference storage, like a, like a proper database or maybe a less proper database, like a file back database. Maybe it's Berkeley DB, maybe it's, um, um, I don't know, LMDB. And all of a sudden you you need something that can run on all those operating systems just for Git. And then JGit needs to be able to talk to it. And libgit2 needs it. So there's, there's problems. Oh yeah. Um, so I, I, I understand. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'll ask Michael nicely. I think that that's, that's the way I'm gonna work on getting that done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if, if they support pluggable backends already, do they do it in a similar way? Because then I guess Git core could do it in a similar way as well, and they could all merrily use the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's true. Um, uh, to an extent, I mean, the API that each presents will be different, but I, I mean, I think they can share a lot of code, the exception being JGit, of course. Um, if, if you want a pure Java implementation, it's going to be going to be a bit different. Yeah. But um, I, I kind of like if I clone it with one tool, uh, if I'm in like Eclipse and using JGit under the hood and then I clone something, well, I, of course, then I'm just going to use the default ref backend probably. Yeah. So I guess on the server, you you only have to support one of the one of the three, or you're only using one of the. Yeah, three, that's right. right. Yeah, unless you're having a hybrid thing where you use multiple for different purposes. And and you could for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 the client is the tricky part because yeah, you want to be able to you want to interop, you want to be able to uh, you know clone something on the command line, open it up with Eclipse, and have that work. I mean, it's kind of a deal breaker in my mind if it doesn't. Mm. Uh, I mean, do do you now inside GitHub use like a, a, a patched uh, Git to get something like a, pro a different ref spec and no we don't so it's still just files the normal way on the disk that's right All right yeah our the repositories we store look surprisingly like the ones that you see on on your on your machine okay and you you solved uh, like large amounts of refs by just getting faster hardware uh predominantly <laughs> we reach out to people and say hey please don't do that yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> carlos was uh, talking about the talk today exactly yeah, I can put a little link to that in the show notes. I mean, yeah, link to all the videos in the show notes. Yeah, uh, definitely an interesting feature. Anything else that you want to kind of take out from uh, or, or uh, repeat from the summit yesterday that were interesting things that were discussed? No, I mean, I, th they're all interesting in their own way, but um, that, you know, ref backends are the, the thing that, that I'm most interested in. Sure. Cool. Okay, then thank you very much for coming on to the show, Edward. Thanks for having me.